If there's one thing you want from your Raspberry Pi robot, like KV, our robot guinea pig, is for it to be able to move around by itself. But at the moment, it's firmly tethered to the screen via the HDMI cable and keyboard. So in this short video, I want to show you how I set up SSH to remotely control our robot. We'll come to what SSH stands for later on. But for now, I'm booting up the Pi Zero that controls our robot. And I want to find those two test programs that I got from Hackspace magazine in part one of the main build video. And they're where we want them, in the home folder, not tucked away in any subfolders. And with the wheels of our robot lifted off the table, we can run our short Python program for testing. But with the wheels on the ground, all is chaos and a far cry from what we're after, which is an autonomous vehicle controlled remotely. And this is where SSH comes in. This stands for Secure Shell, which is a script that will enable us to control our robot from a second computer, connected to the same Wi-Fi network. And that's where we start, by finding the network or IP address of our Pi Zero. And we do this by simply typing in ifconfig into a new terminal window. And when we hit return, we get loads of information, the important bit being this inet address, which we want to write down. Then, from the drop-down in the Raspberry Pi menu, we need to find Raspberry Pi Configuration under Preferences. This will open a dialog box, and we want that Interfaces tab. And right at the top is SSH, and we can just slide across the slider to activate. And that's our robot, ready to receive remote instructions. So we can unplug those cumbersome cables and put KV over to one side for now. Next up, we'll turn our attention to our control center. And for this, I'm using the Raspberry Pi 3 that was in the KV prototype, along with the same compact keyboard and the little screen we used to set up the robot, just switching to a full-size HDMI cable. And without the on-off shim that we fitted to the robot, the Raspberry Pi 3 springs to life as soon as we plug it in. A full-size computer or laptop would do just the same job, and Mac users will recognize the terminal application and its command line interface, and that's what we're going to use to connect through SSH. But first, on that little screen, I want to make the type a little bit bigger, which I can do through the Preferences tab, bumping up the point size and pressing Select, although I'm going to have to move that dialog box to find the OK button. Now, we're ready to go. And with the Pi Zero still on, and both computers connected to the same network, I can start to type into the terminal. First, SSH, then the name of the Pi Zero, and after an at sign, that IP address that we made a note of earlier. After hitting return, all being well, you'll be prompted to enter the password for the Pi Zero. You won't see any of the characters or placeholder equivalents, but if you've typed it incorrectly, when you hit enter, you'll get this. Notice the green text is now the name of our Pi Zero, and if we type the command to run the Python programs on the Pi Zero, by typing python, space, and then the name of the file, it should run in exactly the same way as if we were using Python directly on the Pi Zero. First, the motors test, and then the direction test, both of which pass with flying colors. So we can get KV off of the workbench and onto the floor where we can run that direction test properly. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, why don't you check out some of my other projects? And please don't forget to like and subscribe.